This is $4 million worth of Pokemon cards. The cards are making an incredible comeback since their heyday in 1999. Today, it's one of the largest media properties of all time. YouTuber Logan Paul bought one Pokemon card for 150 grand. Rapper Logic bought one for a cool $220,000. But on December 12, 2020, this card broke the Pokemon collectible record for selling over $350,000. That record was broken just a few hours later when this card sold for $369,000. Each of the high value cards were the same. The first edition holographic Charizard, the rarest Pokemon card in the 1999 base set. But why are these cards reaching such insane values? And why now? Dust off your Pokemon binders, this is Suddenly Obsessed. The concept of Pokemon was created in Japan in 1995. A year later, the first Pokemon video game debuted two versions in Japan, red and green. In 1997, the anime series was launched in Japan. It gained worldwide attention because some of the scenes caused some viewers to have seizures. The animators quickly fixed this issue, and in 1998, the US version of the anime was released. That same month, Pokemon Blue and Red were released for Game Boy. Nintendo spent $20 million on publicity before it ever introduced Pokemon in the United States, four times its usual budget for new products at the time. Needless to say, Pikachu and the crew exploded in popularity. The Blue and Red games raked in $70 million in the first seven months alone, but there were still billions of dollars to be made by the popular franchise. In 1999, the Pokemon trading card game was introduced in the United States. Kids were immediately drawn to them, and a new craze was born. Gary Hayes, known in the Pokeverse as the Pokemon King, spotted the trend right away and made it his mission to collect the rarest first edition Pokemon cards. He's the one that sold his card to Logan Paul for $150,000. I was living in Southern California. I traveled to Nevada, Utah, Arizona, just trying to follow leads where I could get a hold of Pokemon packs. And I knew that because of the popularity of Pokemon, that this was going to be a great collectible item. There were three kinds of prints from the 1999 base set, each with vastly different values. The most valuable are called First Edition, which can be spotted with a little stamp on the left side of the card below the Pokemon that simply says First Edition. These are the most sought after because they're the rarest. Next up are cards known as Shadowless, which can be spotted by shadows around the border of the Pokemon creature. These were printed shortly after the First Edition cards were released and are nearly identical in look except for that fancy stamp, of course. The last batch is known as the Unlimited set, which were the most abundant cards in circulation, but that doesn't mean some of them aren't valuable. The rise in value since their debut is stunning. Let's take the rarest card in the base set, the Holographic Charizard, to use as an example of what the market for this card looks like. I was able to dig up an old Beckett Pokemon magazine from July 2000 that listed the prices of a first edition and an Unlimited Charizard. For a first edition Charizard, prices range from $275 to $375. An unlimited Charizard card range from $35 to $50. Today, it's not uncommon for a first edition Charizard to fetch anywhere from $100 to $300,000. An unlimited Charizard card sold for between $15 to $30,000 in recent auctions. Of course, the card's condition is nearly as important as its rarity. There are two main card grading companies and their scores carry a lot of weight. Professional Sports Authenticator, better known as PSA, and Beckett Grading Services, known as BGS. A card is given a score from 1 to 10 based on its condition, 10 being the highest and 1 the lowest. Most of these rare cards mentioned are in perfect mint condition and are known to card collectors as either PSA 10s or BGS Pristine 10s. Gary says first edition Charizard cards rated out of 10 are rare, and that's even an understatement. There's 120 PSA 10s graded. That's the population report. About 40 of them I had in my hand graded through PSA and then over the last 20 years sold them. Logan Paul got his card. I was almost in tears giving that card up. You know, I really felt a piece of me was going, but I honestly believed that it was better for Pokemon, better for the hobby. Gary has 20 rare Charizards left in his possession and their value is shocking. In total, at today's valuation, these approximately 20 cards are worth about $4 million conservatively. 
these 20 cards. And the market continues to climb for all of those cards. But only two of them are first edition Charizard cards with a rating of BGS Pristine 10. Gary is the only person in the world to own two of those rare cards, and he's looking to add another to his collection. A third BGS 10 recently showed up in the pop report from Beckett, and Gary is willing to go to extreme lengths to get it. Right now, I would pay $750,000 for that third card. The combination of social media, live streaming, and the pandemic are creating a perfect storm for nostalgia, and Pokemon cards are a perfect fit for the current era. The nostalgia factor plays in, and then we're also wanting to get things in better quality, and then with all the celebrities coming out and just saying like, hey, like I'm buying a bunch of Charizards and base set stuff, and it just completely even more magnified it. Live stream guys like PokerRev that crack insane boxes on Twitch all the time, and I think things like that, you have it on in the background enough, it just keeps getting more and more traction. Oh, we got a Mewtwo! Are you kidding me right now? The Poke Game luck is absolutely insane! Beckett is grading over 400 Pokemon cards per day, by far the most popular trading card that gets graded. And since demand is sky high, people are digging into their old collections and sending them in to get graded. I think I've had a premium day order come in where there was at least 100 cards. That's like $12,000 or a little over it. And you're just like, oh my gosh, just to grade cards. It's, it's, it's pretty insane when things like that happen. But generally, they're, those are the kind of orders that are rocking multiple Charizards, Gold Stars, like high-end Pokemon stuff. Which got me thinking. I collected these Pokemon cards when I was younger. I have every unlimited card from the 1999 base set. I kept my rarest cards in a protected sleeve within a Pokemon binder. I wanted to see what their value was worth. So I sent in the Holy Trinity of the set, my Holographic Charizard, Holographic Blastoise, and Holographic Venusaur to get graded by Beckett. They're not perfect, but they're in good condition for being over 20 years old. The first thing that we do is we check for whether or not it's even real. Um, there's so many counterfeits out there today. The next thing that we do is we, we check for alterations, whether the card has been recolored. A lot of times there are chipped corners that show the white stock underneath, or and so people will color those in. There's things called power racing where they're erasing vintage borders or to make a card look more centered on one way or the other. People trim down corners to make them look more sharp and then once all that passes all that criteria then we actually give it a number grade after the examination of my cards by dave the box came back to my house and the results were in all right so the day is finally here i got my three cards back from beckett and i'm about to unbox it right now see what grades i got so here we go first grade no idea which one it's going to be but let's find out Ooh, okay so i got an 8.5 for my charizard not bad, considering I was thinking I was gonna get like around a seven and a half, maybe an eight, if I was lucky. So 8.5, hey, I'll take it. This is, you know, 21 years in a binder with just a regular sleeve. I feel like that's a pretty good score. Second one up, we got a nine for a Venusaur. Wow, that's pretty good. I was not expecting a nine for my cards. Hey, I'll take a nine any day. This is great, I love that, okay. So last but not least, we got Blastoise, and a Blastoise was a 9. Wow, how about that? Again, I wasn't expecting a 10. I wasn't expecting really a 9.5 either. So a 9 here is great. So the fact that I got two of them is really surprising. I'm pretty pumped about this. Let's talk to Dave, see why these scores are the why they are. The surfaces on, on your particular cards were, were very well. They didn't have any damage on them, and, and it's a, that's hard to come by with Pokemon cards. The centering on all of them except for the Charizard were nines. They were all slightly off left to right, and then they all had corner wear on the back and edge wear on the back, which is what kept them all in the nine area. The Blastoise, there was, I think, one small imperfection on the surface, which, which is why it got a 9.5 instead of a 10. But man, you had some really nice cards. I appreciate that. I mean, to be honest with you, I was expecting eights. I was super pumped about it. And this is something I'll probably just cherish for the rest of my life. And uh, it'll definitely be like a great memory to look back on. Definitely happy to have you guys be a part of that process. Oh man, we were honored. Uh, thank you for choosing us uh, uh, to grade your cards. The Pokemon industry has generated nearly $100 billion and is considered by many to be the most successful franchise of all time. That includes Star Wars, Harry Potter, and Hello Kitty. So if you're sitting on some old Pokemon cards, even if it's just the unlimited 1999 base set and they're in good condition, you may want to hold on to them. If Pokemon continues making cards, producing cards for all the kids 
for the next 20 years, we could be looking at over a million dollars a card.